So I've been working on this movie for almost two years. Uh, and... <laughs> There's been ups and downs. You know, uh, better times and worse times. At the beginning it was sort of a release, you know? Um, sort of, I don't know, I enjoyed it a lot more at the beginning. Just figuring it out, writing. Y you have this big, grand idea of what the, the movie's gonna be. And now it's become just a source of anxiety. Um, as if I have something to prove. <laughs> if you're watching this, I finished it, I guess, or I, maybe I didn't put this in the movie. You know, this thing's seen so many iterations at this point, I don't... I don't know how this thing's gonna end. I dedicate myself to doing at least a little bit of work on this each day until it's finished. If I'm unable to reach this goal, how can I call myself a filmmaker? Uh, don't move the whole thing, just the, you know what I mean? Like, the tripod stays in place, but the camera can swivel. Yeah. Okay. Tucked away in the Inland Empire of Southern California, Hemet is a small city known today for its extreme heat, deteriorating infrastructure, and high crime rates. However, despite its condition, it remains strong, nearly doubling its population over the course of a few decades. There's something about Hemet that continues to draw people in, possibly attributed to its cheaper cost of living, a convenient blend of urban and rural development, and its tightly knit community of nearly 90,000 residents as of today. But regardless of extenuating circumstances, Hemet is still suffering as a result of years of economic downturn following the Great Recession of 2007 to 2009, which devastated the would-be growing economy and quality of life in the city. Rated in 2019 as the 44th most miserable city in the United States, many of its residents would probably agree. Others beg to differ. Hey, man. Hey. 
What is, uh, what, what is this? What are you, what's going on? Well, I'm, I'm making a movie. Okay. Do, do you want to help? Yeah, I'll, I'll help. Okay. I mean, it's like 7 in the morning. Okay. Ready? Or, actually, can we start here? Just, yeah, pan over, and then have the mall kind of just to the left of me, you know? And then when we end, uh... History is important. My 8th grade report card would tell you differently. <laughs> <clears throat> but in the case of this film, it's vital. Hemet's land was originally inhabited by members of the Kawiya and Saboba tribes, before it became a cattle ranch in the early 1800s which it remained until the town's founders, W.F. Whittier and E.L. Mayberry, officially named the small town Hemet in 1893. After a devastating 6.5 earthquake that destroyed most buildings in downtown Hemet occurred in 1899, it was clear the town needed serious updates in infrastructure. After 11 years of rebuilding, the 177 residents took a vote on whether or not to incorporate the city of Hemet. The vote passed, and over the next few decades, the citizens of the town would begin to prosper, creating a reliable water supply in Lake Hemet and bringing in more population because of it. And by the 1960s, Hemet had become a rather quiet city with the introduction of large-scale mobile home parks and retirement communities, bringing in more working-class retirees looking to settle down somewhere attractive and quiet. It was during this time that residents began to garnish their cars with Hemet is Heaven bumper stickers to put their pride in their hometown on display. This is regarded by many as the golden age of the city, which would last for 30 years until Hemet's development was then suddenly forced to a halt following the economic downturn of the 1990s. And as time went on, they slowly but surely started to see a decline in the city they'd come to know and love, and an increase in its population. With its residency at the largest it had ever been, and its deteriorating infrastructure and economy, Hemet's crime rate spiked, as did its homeless population, as many of those seeking a quiet and comfortable life were met with something vastly different. This, in addition to a rampant drug crisis, has sent Hemet on a downhill spiral ever since, leaving it virtually unrecognizable from the city it once was. But opinions on Hemet vary depending on the individual, with many tending to land somewhere in the middle. Right. Hemet is heaven, scene IA, take one, shot one, marker. I was doing it one at a time, or you? Either one, if you want to get in there with them, you can. Yeah, we can do it. Uh, so. you I don't want to do Yeah, I don't want to do Can you just, like, stop smelling in the doorway? Stop smelling what? Makes me embarrassed. To be honest, for me, Hemet, as far as like where I live, the neighborhood I live in and I grew up in, has always been a place where I wanted to get away from, to get out of. I never have really lived. There's nicer areas in Hemet, but they have I, not lived I've never, <laughs> yeah, so to be honest, really, the goal is to get out. Here, I think people from here have a lot more character than people from other places. I don't know, that's just magic. Honestly, uh, it's a little ghetto, <laughs> but I, I like it because it's, it's in the center of everything. L.A. is maybe an hour or two away. The beach is an hour or two away. Uh, you want to go to Big Bear, it's an hour or two away. So it's like right in the center of all the good stuff. Uh, really, really horrible things happen and really, really like good things happen. Uh, it's there's a lot of things going on like in the neighborhoods I grew up in and the neighborhood actually I live in right now that you don't really, there's a lot of drug use type of stuff. I'm just being honest. In my neighborhood, that's how it is. Gang members, all that stuff. Uh, so, but I can't really say it's been negative. It really hasn't affected me personally, but it's just not something you want to be around forever. I feel like my kids are better people for having grown up here, but like people get murdered drugs, lots of drugs, lots of churches. Ironically, there's a lot of churches for all the crime. <laughs> uh, I would say just the environment could be very negative. And I've seen things like that too. Uh, right down the street from where I, I used to live, I've seen people walk down the street all bloody and I was driving down the street with one of my friends and there was a, a tweaker I don't know if that's a good term or not. Yeah, we drove by, and um, he threw a wrench through my window, through my back window. He had an arm. I'm not kidding. We were we were good ways ahead of him, and just flew through it. He should be in baseball for sure. Mm, I think the worst thing here is people 
that give up come here for some reason. I don't know what, like there's two main types of people here. There's people that are here for whatever reason. I don't know how they end up here really. I ask everybody that when they move here. I'm like, why did you come here? Just because it's not somewhere that I would think, well, where am I gonna move, you know? But I think people here, some of the people here, like they come to die, I think. And that makes it really sad. My worst experience probably in Hemet would be when I was a younger kid, I was about 15 or 16. I was walking down the street with one of my friends. Uh, just down the street from the police station, we had like an undercover cop car pull up on us. Uh, he had us get up against the wall, he'd take our shirts off to look for tattoos, like see if we were gang members and all that stuff. He searched us, did all that stuff. Really, we were going to the store to get something to drink. So it was like kind of like, you know, I was only a 15 year old kid, so it was kind of like, whoa, you know. I have a lot of friends who were stopped like that the same way. Yeah. With their little scooters or whatever, they would get stopped. Uh, yep. They would get put in handcuffs on the curb for a good hour or two yeah. out of their day. You know, there's just a lot of things like that. There's yeah. a lot of it. There's a lot of it. But there is, I mean, we're talking a lot about, I guess you could say, like the negative side of it. But there is a lot of good. There's a lot of diversity. There's a lot of people who are doing good things there. Um, this but, is more yeah. of the side that we've seen. Uh, um, one time my neighbor came outside and was going to stab his baby with a knife. And there's like a lot of that weird kind of stuff that happens here, you know? Just like, you don't hear that, I don't know, you just don't hear, it's just weird, like, things that you wouldn't, it was my neighbor, he like had his baby and he was like holding the baby with the knife. And the cops came around the corner and they like took him down, it was crazy. Uh, from what I know from others, there is a lot of good too. And from some of the neighborhoods that I've yeah. driven by, it's good, it's, good, it's, nice neighborhood. It's definitely not the worst place in the world. So. Yeah. I personally kind of like it. Yeah. Anytime I would move away, I would miss it. I would miss the people that I knew and just the familiar, everything just familiar. I think it looks better now than it used to. Most of the people you talk to, when they talk about Hemet, their first reaction is super negative. Like, oh, Hemet, oh yeah. That, yeah. You know, but you can, like I said, you can live there and have a decent life. And there's good people there, but I think it has a reputation that uh, is not so great. I think Hemet has just as much chance as anywhere else. Yeah. I think even more so because we're kind of surrounded by, you know, we're stuck here together. So it makes it, you, you have no choice but to learn to do better. I think it'd probably be good to hit the theater at some point. The one on Harvard. Yeah, uh, probably hit the bowl. Too. The bowl? The Ramona Bowl. Nobody calls it the bowl. Hey, Tom, can I have uh, a... Hey. Uh, so, can I, uh, can I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what, do you, um, what do you think we are making? Yeah, I met Donovan at a convention for... Um, Hammer enthusiasts. Yeah. Uh, no, camera. Camera, I'm sorry, a convention for camera Bro, wh why are you writing a fake backstory like for us? That's weird. What, do you want to tell a real story? Well, yeah, I mean, this. Okay, uh, well, the real story is, um, I really don't even know this guy. I met him a year ago, he just uh, followed God. me home. You know, I have let all these people in my house, I really don't. Who oh, any of these people are? It's just uh, to, what, what is this? What is this movie? Well, it's a documentary, and those are just my buddies from school. You don't gotta worry about them. That's okay. Fine. Can you? Uh... All right. Well, why why him? It? It's an interesting place. You know, I think there's a lot of interesting ground to be covered here. People here can be really interesting too. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I live in Hemet. Um. That's fine. It's a. Uh... I, I don't really have an opinion about it, so it's just kind of... Is that good? I'm just... I don't know, I feel like a <laughs> film is a bit much to cover a town where, you know, the most popular commodity is meth. I'm um, just... just why is... Uh, what, what's gonna make people want to watch this film movie? I don't know. I mean... Yeah, I mean, I, I mean like, yeah, I'd like to work in film. I mean, I, I do work in film. You know, I do that sort of thing, like, you know... Uh, you know, I've done a bit of the freelance work and stuff, and I, I want to be a DP. What's DP stand for? 
well, it could stand for a couple different things, but what I'm referring to is a director of photography. Yeah, look, man, you, you want to work in film, right? Yeah. Well, like every little step counts, even if it's something like yeah, this. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't want to say Hello? Hello? It's time to go. Okay. Don't, you don't want to touch the glass? I'll, I'll, I'll clean it up. How many pages is this? And I'm on cards and I'm playing myself. Yeah, yeah. So like I've written the script, it says, you know, Donovan when it's me, it says Carson when it's you. Yeah, I know, obviously. But you didn't want to hire like an actor to blame me? Oh well it's like authentic, you know, like it's like uh, we're being authentic, you know, we're putting our, our true selves. Yeah, you're trying to page. be you're trying to be an auteur. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 you are. Okay. Um yeah, we can get started, but I, I need food. You want, uh, what are you doing? Do you think of Domino's or Pizza Hut? Just something quick. I, the James Burrito. The eighth wonder of the world. On the outside, a simple creature, not unlike many of us. Its surface bare and plain. A flour tortilla so light, its surface glides across your tongue like an ocean of bread. Inside, carne asada. Cooked to perfection. French fries, crispy and soft. Sour cream, creamy and sour. Salsa, cheese, and last but most certainly, most certainly, not least, ranch dressing. Many might thank God himself for this burrito, but personally, I would like to thank James, wherever he may be. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Give me the salsa. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, even better. Mmm. Why are you not eating? Oh, I'm not, I'm not hungry anymore. I, uh, I lost my appetite. Hmm. More for me. So, you know, I mean, this, this documentary, what, why are they still filming? It's just... You know, just act natural. Yeah, I know, I know, but we're just eating lunch. What does this have to do with anything? Well, the James Burrito's a hemet staple. Yeah, I know, but it's just us eating lunch. I mean, I don't think it's very interesting. I mean, who's, who's going to want to watch that, you know? It's just... Why do you like this thing so much anyways, man? It's just objectively... Amazing. Okay, well, you don't think it's overrated? Yeah, yeah you don't think it's overrated? No. But you know, you know, you have to admit, you kind of, uh, you know, romanticize it a bit. What? Yeah, you romanticize it. I, n no, I heard what you said. I, I don't do that. No, no, you do, actually. You, you do, Donovan. You, um, you romanticize a lot of things. Like what? I don't know. I'm just saying. Well, I, it's, it's a good burrito. I don't know. Why is it such a big deal? I don't know, I'm just saying maybe your love for it is based on nostalgia. Maybe, yeah, I guess it's a little nostalgic. It's not for you? No. I never left.
Jason there? Okay. Hey man, um, listen, I'm sorry to do this. I, uh, I think I need to quit. Yeah, no, I know it's a difficult decision. I, um, I've been, uh, I've been working on this documentary for about a year, and, um, I'm no closer to finishing it than when I started. Um, so I think I just need to push, pursue it full time, you know, and, yeah, um, Oh, I know. I... Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, th uh, this Friday works. That's perfect. Yes, and, and I'm so thankful for this opportunity. Yeah. Okay. No, no, I will see you then. Yeah, sorry, I have, I have to go right now, but yes. Yeah, I, I will see you then. No, thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, bye. Who's that? Oh, um, uh, nobody. Just, just, just my mom. Just my mom. <laughs> Among the few historic buildings in downtown Hemet that still stand today, the Hemet Theater remains a vibrant centerpiece of the community. Built in 1921 by William Martin, the theater has retained much of the nostalgic charm of that era, and somehow survived despite countless natural disasters and budgetary constraints threatening its survival. It's been renovated only three times in its century of existence, twice in the 1940s and the 1960s respectively, and again after raising the necessary funds following the theater's 100-year anniversary in 2021. Not only is the Hemet Theater one of the oldest buildings in Hemet, but one of the oldest standing movie theaters in the country, so I found it necessary to pay them a visit to experience it for myself, and to gain a glimpse into Hemet's rich past. The guy that did this mural does all the murals at Bass Pro Shop. Uh, the original theater was across the street, and was leveled in, I believe it was 1916 or 18, by a massive earthquake here in Hemet that demolished almost the whole town. And Mr. Martin bought this property for $1,000, and built this fortress. Uh, the walls are 11 inches thick, reinforced steel. Uh, there is a basement still. Uh, we own we the whole upper floor, which were Dennis's offices and um, law offices. There was a barbershop next door. And like I say, this place has survived 100 years of earthquakes and a massive fire next door mm -hmm. that they poured over six hours of water on. Yeah, so I, I understand there's been a great effort to preserve the theater. Absolutely. Um, what about this theater makes it so special to Hemet's community? Probably the history of it. You walk in these doors and you're, you walk back in time. It's a small town. It's not like Los Angeles, all these people. It's just quiet. I mean, it's just, I love it out here. You're surrounded by the mountains. You know, yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. Wow, it's kind of amazing in here. Really? Yeah, man, look around. This this is history. Yeah, I'm sure. Historic showings at the uh, Hemet Theater with uh, <laughs> Marilyn Monroe, Rock Hudson, James Dean. No, here that's, every weekend. that's not what I'm saying. I, you have to admit, though, this is this is kind of cool. Yeah, I guess. Hey, let's uh, let's be actors. What? What are you doing? So often. Wait, 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 that's, uh, that, that's Shakespeare. Yeah. As every alien pen hath found my use, and under thee there pours you the spurs. Thine eyes that taught the dumb on high to sing, and heavy ignorance aloft to fly.
friends, Romans, countrymen. Lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives on after them. The good is often interred with their bones, so let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus have told you Caesar was ambitious. And if it were so, it was a grievous fault, and grievously hath Caesar answered it. Come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. Here was my friend, faithful and just to me. This is the Hemet Mall, or as we used to call it, the Hemet Small, be, uh, be, because it's, it's small, so. Do you want to take that again? Oh, no, no, it's fine. Um, we're here to interview those here today on their thoughts on the town and gain a window into their psyches. You good? Uh, yeah. Cut. Sorry. Okay. Um, it looks a lot different here. The one I was here last. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They they renovated it like a like a little like a long like a while ago. Just, yeah, yeah kind of like the old one. It, really? I mean, it looks much nicer now. I don't think so. Hmm. All right, just give me a couple minutes. As far as recreational activities go, Hemet doesn't really have much to offer. So growing up here, you'd often find yourself doing the same things over and over again. And while it definitely gets repetitive, there's something deeply nostalgic to me about these places. Bowling nights with the family, birthday parties at the local arcade, going to the ludicrously tiny mall with my friends after school. They're memories that evoke a simpler time, ones that make me question any negative connotations I may hold against the city. Of course there's a lot of bad in Hemet, uh, there's a lot of bad everywhere, but there's just as much good here as well, and neither experience, good or bad, cancels out the other. Hemet truly is just another place, but it's one that's special to me. So, why are we here? You'll see. Come on. Look, it's, it's small. No, 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 uh, -uh. out, Look, out. We're filming a movie. I... Why? Well... You can't just barge in here with a camera crew and expect us to... Well, no, okay, you see that over there? It's my name on the wall, so... Bro, is that why we're here? Yes, yeah, student of the year, five years in a row, so... This is an elementary school, please leave. Sorry to waste your time, we are leaving. Dude, w what about the scene? Whatever, man. Bye! Person. Person, wait. Seriously, can you please just take me home? Oh, uh, what, so you're just done filming today? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm done today. This is stupid, man. We literally have, like, two more places to go today, that's it. This isn't interesting to anyone but you. Seriously. Okay. No, yeah, yeah, no, I, I see that. Um, we can just cut this bit, move on, get the rest of what we need today. Okay? Fine, yeah. It's hard to look at the current state of Hemet and be hopeful about the city's future. However, there have been major efforts to improve the quality of life by city officials and residents alike, with a large emphasis being placed on renovating buildings in need of attention. And while the city is beginning to look better, the roads are still particularly rough, and there are many other issues plaguing Hemet's restoration. 23% of the population live below the poverty line, and crime rates are high, meaning there's still a lot of work to do if Hemet is to get back to its former glory. However, regardless of its current state, and in many cases the ability to leave, people tend to stay here. There's even an urban legend about it, deemed the Hemet Curse. Many different iterations of the curse have been passed down from generation to generation, many attributing the curse to the shadow that Talkwitz Peak casts over the valley. However, one important detail about the legend remains consistent, that if you enter Hemet's valley, you'll either never leave or you'll eventually return. According to the story, if you intend to leave Hemet and never return, there's a right and a wrong way to do so. 
There are three main roads that lead in and out of Hemet, Dominagoni Parkway, the Ramona Expressway, and Florida Avenue. While driving out of Hemet on Dominagoni Parkway and Florida Avenue are the supposed safe ways to leave Hemet, taking the Ramona Expressway would allegedly place you under the spell of Talkwitz Peak, dooming you to eventually make your way back to Hemet. Whether or not the curse may hold any merit, it's interesting that one of the only urban legends about the city has a self-deprecating nature, depicting Hemet as more of a prison than a city. And while there are many hurdles on the path to restoring the city, one of the biggest, in my opinion, is rebuilding the strength of the community. While there are many actively working to improve Hemet, there are many others who see it as a lost cause, citing issues with the lack of care in the community itself. Well, I was born and raised here. Um, I have gone to eight schools here in Hemet. I've had many, we've had six, I think six or seven break-ins over the course of my life. Two of which, like, TVs were taken, and it was like, you know, what, like, come back home to nothing in the house. Yeah. Uh, the people here are just kind of toxic and poisonous. People that I have met that are good are the people that I keep close, <laughs> like, yeah. like the people I met at school, but a lot of those people have gone in the gutter for me, you know? Yeah. Kind of hard not to, especially living here. How would you describe Hemet to somebody who's never been here? <laughs> um, Satan's ass crack. Um, <laughs> Uh, there's yeah. there's many things that you could try to explain to somebody. Uh, don't come here. It's, just, yeah. uh, it's not a place to live. It's a place right. to drive through to get to Idlewild. Do you feel like Hemet's getting any better? And if not, what changes would you like to see? That's a kind of a hard question. Um, I mean, looking wise, it does. It, there is a lot of construction going on to make the city look better, which I appreciate. Um, Oh wait, no. There is a new homeless shelter. Um, mm. The new, the, the old big lots. Mm. They're they're turning that into a, a huge homeless shelter. Oh, we don't even have one single one. Not a, not a single homeless shelter. So, that's something that I'm really really glad that's happening. But other than that, no, it's been the same for a long time. Yeah, I would love to see more homeless shelters. Um, so I think people need to be. I would like to see more kind people in this town. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice. Because I, I, I do see a lot of that here where, like, it's just people helping other people out. And, like, it's... Um, it's kind of sad. I could see that from, like, older people. We have a lot of old people in mm. this town, so I could see that from, like, a lot of older people because this is where they... This is their home, yeah. you know? Um, and they don't really... They don't really mm -hmm. realize all the stuff that's going on because it doesn't yeah. affect them. That's yeah, it's a lot of... Um, everybody ha has their hole here. They're comfortable in that hole. I mean, I could see it from... I mean, I got pulled out of school in the middle of my senior year well, I had to um, due to personal reasons and I had to move to with my family to Marietta and I hated it really I hated every second of it out there I hated the people I hated that I wasn't with my friends mm -hmm. I hated the fact that it wasn't Hemet and yeah. I don't know why because I grew up hating Hemet I grew mm -hmm. up always saying I can't wait to get out of here um, but once I was out I was like no, I want to go back. <laughs> like, it was yeah. almost like I, I, like, I want to go back home. <laughs> right. What do you think about, like, the Hemet curse? Yeah, no, I don't think that's very true. Mm -hmm. um, it's true if you want it to be. Excuse me, can we, uh, can we ask you some questions for our movie? No, no, no thanks. Okay. What are, you, what, what are we doing? Are doing more interviews? Yeah, man, it's, it's an anthropological study. You can't study people if you don't talk to them. Okay, so, sorry about that. Um, look, I, I just think maybe... You know, we uh, we don't do more interviews with folks. Maybe like on the history of the town a little bit. You know? Excuse me, can we ask you some questions for our movie? Okay, look, just I think back-to-back -back interviews is, is not really interesting. You know, uh, we can we can talk about some of the history. Maybe sprinkle in some of uh, you know. No. We already talked about the history, man. But... I know, but maybe we just we listen. We sprinkle in just some different ideas about you know like where this town is coming from. Like you know who is you know. You, you know what I mean? Like, we're, we're just sprinkling in some of the stuff. Yeah, I, look, of course, we're, we're doing the interviews, Clearly okay? Clearly not. We're not doing the interviews. No one wants to talk to you. Uh, what? You think you can make this better than me? I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that, but uh, yeah, probably I could. Yeah. <laughs> that's rich. Oh, that's rich? Well, at least I live here. You don't even live here anymore. Uh, well, yeah, that, that's what I'm here to find out, man. What it's like now. Oh, yeah? Well, you're doing a really shit job at it. You don't mean that. Yes, I do. This movie's gonna be fucking terrible. All right, you're, you're parading around to the town to the things that made you special, your childhood. You're not even learning anything about this. You're making a, you know, you're just like looking through a scrapbook. That's not what I'm doing. Yes, it is, and I'm working tirelessly on this film for you, all right, without any say, 
All right, you use people, man. You just use them for your own fucking benefit. And why the not. fuck are you still filming? Give me the fucking camera. Give me the fucking camera. All right, down, just man. give me the. Hey, Yo, give me the, who's filming? Huh? Give me the. Hey, give me the fucking camera, man. Hey, not to, uh, give me the. Give me the fucking stop. camera. Give me the camera. Turn the, camera. Turn the oh, fucking camera off. What? You're just done? Yeah, I'm done. I'll be in the car. Hey, hey, uh, what's up? Are you, um, are you busy right now? Oh, I, I'm in town and I'm, uh, I'm filming a little movie. Um, and I was wondering if you, uh... uh yeah, no, that's cool. No, yeah, no worries. Hey, Stace, was, uh, I was wondering if you wanted to help me out, uh, filming a little, little movie. Oh, skydiving. Wow, that's, uh... Daryl, hey man, just uh, just seeing if you're busy. Well, I'm trying to uh, trying to film a movie and. Uh... <sighs> the city's economy. Be The city's economy began to slowly grow over time, as more retirement communities and single-family homes were built. The city's economies... So I've been working on this movie for almost two years. Uh... I want to talk candidly for a minute, you know, and ju and just get my thoughts out, I guess. And it's hard to even say, like, oh, I'm going to speak candidly now. Because in the back of my mind, it's just, you know, what's the best thing that I can say right now to service the movie, to make it, to make this thing better? If there's been ups and downs, better times and than worse times, you know. Of course, but at the beginning it was sort of a release, you know, and I had all these big ideas and I was like, yeah, this is going to be so cool, like, but people have done this before and they've done it better th than me. I don't know, I enjoyed it a lot more at the beginning and now it's become just a source of anxiety. I've been spending so much time caring about whether or not this thing is impactful um, as if I have something to prove I th this whole thing is about romanticization right like that's one of the main themes I've been simultaneously criticizing my excessive romanticization while also romanticizing the like frustrated artistic process that I'm stuck in like somehow drowning myself in this movie will make it better because people will see me as more dedicated, more just deeper, cooler. I think I set myself up for failure from the beginning, kind of, honestly, because I... What, was I supposed to come to some, like, conclusion by the end of this and be like, oh, I'm better now and I, I don't have any of those qualities that I uh, set out to criticize in the first place, you know? Like, that was never going to happen. I need to do anything other than uh, continue to sink myself into this because it's not doing anything for me. And here I am, oh, I'm still just, like, lingering, trying to think of something impactful to say. 
I'm just, uh, I'm just gonna stop. I'm just gonna, yeah. Um, okay. Donovan, this is Alice from Evergreen Studios. I'm calling because we received your application for the freelance videographer position for tomorrow at 2 p.m. Um, we viewed your portfolio and we think you're a great fit, so uh, we wanted to call and see if you were available. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I, I am available. Okay, great. Yeah, it's at 2 p.m. tomorrow on our studio back lot. Um, if you have a pen nearby, I can, I can give you the address. Okay, yeah. You said at what time? It'll be at 2 p.m. on our studio back lot. Um, the address is 17349. Hello? Congratulations. You've won a free stay in one of our five-star hotels. <laughs> Alice from Evergreen Studios. I'm calling because we never received your confirmation from you regarding the job we offered, and as a result, we've had to move forward and choose someone else for the position. I apologize for any inconvenience this may have caused. Uh, thank you for your understanding, and we'll keep your information on file for future opportunities. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much, and have a great day.
just feel so lost. I'm not sure where to take this movie from here. You know, I, it's like I've hit a wall, and I, just, I don't know how to get past it. Could you maybe explain the movie so I understand it better? Sure. Uh, well, it's a fake documentary. You know, it starts out as a documentary, but then things go off the rails when I drive my friend Carson to quit the production. Uh, and it causes the movie to stop being made. Um, but Carson is just an actor. You know, he's a character in the movie. Uh, but, I, but I play myself. It, it's all a bit convoluted, to be honest. So it's written like there's a script. Yeah, I wrote it. So Carson is you. I, w I wouldn't say that he's me exactly. You know, it, it's more complicated than that. Well, he's part of you, right? Yeah, that's one way to look at it. You wrote a script where you fight with a character that makes you unable to finish the film. Do you have a hard time finishing other projects? Yeah, it's been a problem for me for a while. You know, I'll start something and then I'll just lose motivation and never finish it. So is Carson maybe a replacement for your inner turmoil? Yeah, I, I see what you're getting at, but uh, I'm not sure. You know, it's, it's just a movie, too. Well, I'm your therapist, not a writer. Uh, let me ask you this. What is it you want? For the movie, you mean? No, you. What do you want? I want to finish the movie, and I want to be proud of it. You know, I, I wrote this big scene for the ending, um, but it's eight pages long, so much dialogue, uh, and it's, it's just terrible. I, you know, I can't put it in the movie. But what's the scene? It's just a long conversation between me and Carson, and... It's just not good. I don't know. I don't know how to fix it. Is there maybe some part of you that doesn't want to finish it? I don't know. Um, it just feels inauthentic because it's scripted. You know, it's it's fake and messy. If you, you, know? if you need authenticity, focus on that. You're writing it. If it came out of you, it is authentic to your character. I, I think you should embrace that. Uh, you may need to confront that part of you. Make up with Carson. That might feel a bit rushed. Well, just think about it. At the end of the day, be sure to write it the way you need it to be. And uh, that's our time. Same time next week. Yep. Thanks for meeting me here. Yeah, sure. What do you want to talk about? Oh, well, look, um, there's only like a few more scenes left in the movie if you if you wanted to help out, you know? Really? That's why you brought me out here? What, so you're just completely done? Yeah, man, it's not worth it. Great. You can see so many stars up here. I miss that. Can't really see a single one in the city. Yeah, well, in the city, at least you're a part of something. You know, you feel like you're part of a bigger organism. Out here, you just, you just kind of feel like you're a cast aside. Hmm. What? Huh? No, I'm, I'm just the opposite. Like, the city makes me feel small. 
Ah, right. You like it out here because you your little ego, huh? No, that's that's. No, not that's not it. It is though. You know, you want to feel so important, so bad. You just, ugh, I'm so tired of this, dude. Tired of what? Tired of dealing with people like you. You know, people who think, see, the whole world is a big competition, All right? To, to you, when you're in the city, you're just another number, another face. Everybody doing their job, playing their part. You and you can't handle that. So you come down here to do the work. You know, here where you feel like your work is important, it means something. Listen, Donovan, everything is made up of something. Everything in the universe, okay? People are are made up of cells, which are made up of atoms. Movies, right? They're made up of scenes, which are made up of, uh, 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 of breaks, of cuts, of sequences. But it, it's all just stuff. It's matter. All right? The difference between us is not how we're made, it's how we're shaped, okay? You have been told your whole life that you were going to be somebody important and do great things. Then you went to go do those things and you got to go to those places, but it turns out that there were a bunch of other people who were just as good as you and not even just as good, better. And you can't deal with that fact, right? Look, okay, look, you, you say people are shaped by their experiences, mm -hmm. right? I just, I just thought maybe if I made this movie and kind of you know, went back into my experiences, maybe I'd learn a little bit about myself in the process, you know. But I, the way that I've done it is, it, I, I've been self-indulgent, and it's just, I've been not fair to you, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, no shit. It's fine. It's fine, man. But I'm not working on the movie anywhere. No, it's not. Are you serious? Are you fucking serious, dude? You been filling me the whole time? Huh? I can see, we can see you, asshole. Huh? Come here, give me, give me this, give me this. What are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? You, are you serious, man? Huh? Carson. All look for your own game. Hey, 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 Carson here. Everyone uh, who's been watching this movie, who's been watching this guy, um, <laughs> you know, talk about this town, uh, this pretentious asshole who knows nothing about this place, I want to tell you for the record, this movie is going to be shit. It's going to be a piece of crap. And I, on the record, regret helping out in any way. And more importantly, I regret being this guy's friend. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. He can take this shit, he can edit it, you know, make me look like I'm some crazy person who's having a blow up, right? <laughs> or he could just edit me out, make himself look good, like he came to some good understanding or, you know, whatever. Anyways, you know, I can't believe you, man. You know that I, uh, you know I got a job offer? What? Yeah. But, like, what do you mean? <laughs> Jesus, you sound so surprised. I got a job offer, like... On a set, like on a real movie set, here. Like, what, like you're the coffee guy? Oh, fuck off. No, I'm like director of DP, man. Director of photography. What? Yeah. Don't sound so surprised. Uh, look, you didn't even think to tell me? Why would I tell you? You were just gonna leave the movie, and like, let me finish this by myself. <laughs> right down there in the zippy room, I'm gonna finish. This is classic you just walking out with Oh stop, control. don't don't project your shit on me please. Okay. I made this movie for us. Like, you you made this movie for us? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, this yeah? is our movie, man. This is no, this is your movie, okay? You just drug me along, you don't even take into my opinion, you just you're, you're so full of crap. That's how you're gonna say, man? What you do you want me to say? You could at least be happy for me. Happy for you? Happy why? That you're just leaving me here? No, that I that someone gave me an opportunity. I gave you an opportunity. No, you didn't give me an opportunity, man. You... You know what, man? I think you are one of the worst people I've ever met. No, I take it back. You are the worst person I've ever met. You're just going home? Yeah. You need a ride or? I'll walk, man.
<laughs> what? What are you doing out here in the middle of nowhere? Uh, I was on my way home. Okay. Well, I mean, this is definitely not the way. Must have gotten lost. Yeah, definitely. Well, why are you out here? But I came to look for you. Why? I don't really know, man. I'm just a side character. Donovan. What are we still doing here, man? What's going on? I, I left a note. I, I just had to get you here. Um, I have something to show you, and it's it's something I've been working on for for quite some time now, um, and I'm I'm pretty proud of it. Uh, okay. So, uh, should should I come over there or? Oh no, you stay there. Oh. Uh, I'm gonna set up. Oh, you're good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here you go. So, uh, you got a lot of titles. You, uh, you bite up more than you can chew? <laughs> uh, well, that's great. That's wonderful. That's good. But uh, I really have a question for, uh, I'd say, uh... All kind of uh, filmmakers, aspiring filmmakers. What's your process? Well, you know, sometimes I, I just, I like to lock myself in, in my dark room and, you know, uh, kind of drown myself in an existential depression until, uh... Eventually a script pops out. Wow, we got sort of a tortured artist over here. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you don't. You don't like that one. Okay. No. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I have something else. Um, you missed the best part, but uh, yeah, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. I didn't want to kill the man. See, but he left me no choice. You would have put the business in there. No, this is just weird. Can we go back to the other one? Okay, y yeah. Uh, that's mine. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Well, I, first off, I just want to say, myself, my staff, we watched the film. We are all very impressed with your movie. Round of applause for him again for the movie. And uh, yes, but um, I think I gotta speak for, I will just speak for myself. What the hell does it mean? <laughs> Well, I uh, suppose you could say it's up for interpretation. Okay, well, that's incredible, incredible. And I've also been told that right here for you guys, special treat, you brought a trailer of your next project. Is that true? Perhaps. Okay, you guys are in for the treat, so I'm told you have it. Let's go ahead and load it up. Let's roll clip for the next project. Go on. Next year, experience the worldwide phenomenon that you won't want to miss.
a dramatic continuation of everyone's favorite underdeveloped side character with unbridled action and questionable CGI. Will you just let me use the car? Dad, what are we gonna do? I passed my test. Okay, I did pass my test, but it doesn't matter. I just wanna go to the dance, please. Carson, only on Gooby Plus. Okay. So what do you think? Um. No, uh, that was that was good. Yeah, yeah it was uh, it was good. You didn't like it, did you? Well, no. I I, I just think it could use some work. Is all you know. I see. So you come in here, unannounced. Well, I thought you brought me here. You drink my coffee, and you proceed to shit all over my work. Sorry, sorry. Um, it's just my honest opinion. Well, maybe you should keep your honest opinion to yourself. Okay, I, I've been working on this thing for a long time. I've stayed up late, I've sacrificed my weekends, I've put my own needs aside just to make this thing work, and... If it's not good enough for you, so be it. Cuz you're just you're you're just jealous. You're jealous and and you're you're trying to bring me down like you always do, but one day you'll see. You'll see what I'm capable of and you'll regret ever doubting me. Cuz I'm going to be successful and you're going to be left behind. You're just jealous. Thought I'd be able to tie everything together, you know, um, but none of it makes sense. Like, why did I even choose Hemet in the first place? There's not much to say about it, you know, besides basic observations. But do you feel connected to the story? Connected to uh, what? Like Hemet? No, no, like the story you're telling. Well, that's the thing, like, what story is there to tell? You know, even everyone I've interviewed has eventually said something like, it's just a place. No, I mean, like, your story, like, you clearly care about Hemet. Yeah, I do. So, explore it. I, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I, I just think I'm done. Oh, I'm not telling you how to write it. Just try to be more vulnerable. Like, it's easier said than done, obviously, but, like... It, no, I yeah, I know. It, it's... I, I just don't want to make it seem like Hemet is this great place. You know, it isn't. Well, it doesn't have to be good or bad. It can be both. Most things are... So what's the answer? Whatever you decide. It's how you see it. I don't know. I mean, yeah, it'd be a lot easier to just give up, though. 
Obviously, but do you really want to give one? Like, it's two years of work down the train. Yeah, two years of pretending to be someone I'm not. So stop pretending. The fact that you're still talking about it means that you're not actually done. That's the thing, though, you know, I'm, uh, like, I'm at a point where I have no idea where the performance stops and I begin. You know, I've been playing myself for so long that I don't know how to just be myself anymore. Well, the performance is coming from somewhere, right? Yeah. Isn't that authentic in its own way, though? I mean, you wrote it. It came from your brain. So why'd you write yourself the way that you did? I think I'm having a lot of trouble accepting that um, this thing's just not going to be perfect and polished. Um, and I think I should have just accepted that it wasn't going to be from the get go, you know? Um, Zelda, relax. Having a lot of trouble accepting that this thing isn't going to be um, as perfect and polished as I wanted it to be. And I don't know. I, I think I should have just accepted from the get-go that it wasn't going to be that because this thing's messy. It's a messy idea. It's a risky idea. And and that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, it's it's easy to play it safe and create something that's um, polished and perfect, but it's not always the most meaningful or impactful. Sometimes it's the messier, riskier ideas that have the most potential. And you may not have realized that from the beginning, but uh, I understand it now. And even though it's hard to accept that this thing isn't going to be perfect, I, I want it to be something special, something that I can be proud of and something that makes a difference, even if it's small. But I'm realizing that I, I've been spending so much time caring about making the perfect film. But it's not about that, you know, it's, it's about being vulnerable and exposing the truth, even if it means being honest about my own love for this city. I've always had a special connection to Hemet, even though you know, I've tried to hide it at times, and if I can be open and vulnerable about that, then maybe I can capture the real experiences of the people that I interview. And if I can do justice to the stories of the people of Hemet by opening up about my own, then to me that's all that matters. A lot of people talk shit on Hemet. Like, the people talk shit, they, they, they just say it's better as fuck, so we are gonna rep we want to represent Hemet. As someone who has a hard time connecting with people, I found a strange sense of belonging in Hemet's punk scene of all places, particularly through the band Happy and Hemet. Their performances are not just about the music, but about a message of unity and belonging they bring to the community. They provided a space where I felt like I belonged, and I know I'm not alone in that feeling. They bring together all different types of people from different backgrounds and make them feel like they're part of something bigger. Like any time, and it's happened multiple times where people ask where you're from, and it's like, oh, you're really from Hemet? And then they say, yeah, and they're like, literally, have you gotten the answer? And they're like, ooh. But we were like, fuck it. Let's play with you. Let's play with fucking hood, dude. You never tend to be absolutely Hemet. It's sarcasm, too, because Hemet fucking sucks. It doesn't suck that bad. bad. You know, as long as you stay away from people, you can stay out here.
so uh i'm 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 pretty close to finishing this <sighs> Um, I'm, so I'm pretty close to finishing this thing. Um, <sighs> we're, uh, we're in the final stretch. We're, uh, what? <laughs> I've written myself into a corner. I feel stuck in a movie, a story I'm unable to finish because of my own inability to confront my flaws. My own self-analysis has been plagued by writer's block broken into a three-act structure, my conscience replaced by a narrator. The more I've attempted to blur the line between reality and fiction, the more the fiction has become my reality. When are we at our most authentic? When we're vulnerable? When we're alone? But how much of what we tell ourselves when we're alone is a performance? Authenticity feels like this unreachable, mystical thing that unlocks the door to happiness and success, attractiveness. Just be yourself, you're unique. I don't know. Maybe we're at our most authentic when we have to make tough decisions, when we're lost, discarded, like a spoon left on the roof. Donovan, Donovan, Philip Andre, yo, I finished your script. Yeah, I liked it. It's a, uh, it's a sweet little gem. It's um, yeah, it's very quirky, and and I could see it clearly, and uh, yeah, it could be, it could be something. It could be, it could really be something. Um, give me a call. If you want to talk or text? Um, I know you said this was kind of like, it's because like thirty pages outlined, and um, you you know you're gonna fill that with mostly interviews, but. Now, uh, now I want to see it. Is Hemet, California, is that your hometown? And um, is this kind of like a love letter to that or, or no? And um, yeah, I would like to talk more about it, but definitely, definitely interested. And um, it, could be, it could be really cool. But, you know, what I'm interested too is, it, is that where, did it end with um, Carson and Donovan there? Do they ever, you know, reconcile their friendship? Or cause there's a lot there, and that's what I like about it. And that's what was good about the writing. It felt like, something was going on with Carson and then, you know, he wasn't a good friend, he took off. And, you know, that thing he says at the end, Carson is, is killer. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, let me know. Bye. So you, I'm just talking to you. Is it more like? Uh, yeah, just casual, like as if I were interviewing <laughs> you. Know, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, whenever I'm ready. Yeah. Let's just do a take of a little stage punch for me. Oh, uh, like do a chest. Do a chest. Yeah. Okay, ready. Hoos. Nice. Yeah. Yep. And that's all we need from that's that. That's it. Yep. Just like a, just a punch here? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
You ready? Yeah. Where am I on screen? Um, you're like right in the middle. Okay. Your head's cut off, is it okay? Yeah, hey, you too. I hope, uh, you know. I've been looking for some big theme, some thing or idea to bring it all together, make it cohesive. I don't know the last time I had a full night of sleep just because I've been working on this, feeling like I have to get it done. And, and the more I work on it and the more I add to it, the less complete it feels, the more work it feels like I have to do. But regardless of outlying factors, I've realized that I've been the biggest thing in my way. I wanted to make a movie about Hemet, but ended up making a movie about me chasing an impossible standard of authenticity that I was never going to be able to capture. I've used my hometown as a glorified film set for the past two years and forgotten at times that these are real people with real lives, real problems, and while they have to endure whatever Hemet may decide to throw at them, I get to watch from a safe distance. I relate to Hemet in a very personal way. Um, beyond being born and raised there, I, I feel a connection to the town because of our shared history. Around the same time that Hemet started to go seriously downhill, so did my own mental health. I took a turn for the worse, as the city did too, not as a result, just incongruence. And as I watched my childhood slip away, I watched the city that gave it to me do so as well. And I think I came back to find out why, to recapture that feeling of being a kid again. I wanted to study Hemet to find out where the hope went, how it can come back. If there was any hope left for Hemet, maybe there was hope left for me. The city means a lot to me despite its flaws, which it absolutely has, and there was no way I was ever going to cover the entirety of Hemet in one movie, but what I wanted to show was that Hemet may have a worse reputation than it deserves, and I wanted to capture the parts of it that I truly love.
I spent two years of my life making this movie. Um, pouring my heart and soul into every frame, every shot, every line of dialogue. And as I was getting close to finishing, I was realizing that there was something missing. I'd become trapped in a narrative that I didn't even know I was writing. I was a prisoner of my own creation. But then, something changed. I, I realized that I could break free from that narrative and rewrite the ending. I realized this movie isn't just about Hemet or about my life or whatever. It, it's about potential. The potential to start anew, the possibility of a new beginning. So I picked up the camera again and I started filming and as I did, I felt a new sense of purpose and meaning. And I came to the conclusion that the story that I set out to tell from the beginning was one of someone overcoming their doubts and fears and breaking free from the past to create a new future. I wanted to capture the authentic struggles and triumphs of the people of Hemet. Um, you know. But what I, what I needed was to be vulnerable in my storytelling and to show the raw and real emotions of not only the characters of this city, but myself. And now as I sit here with the final cut of the film next to me, I, I can't wait to share it with the world. Because I know this movie is, is not just about me. It's about all of us. It's about the potential we all have to create our own stories, to rewrite our own endings. I, I see a lot of beauty in this city, and I wanted to show that despite all of the hardships, there's still a lot of hope that no matter where you come from or what you've been through, you have the power to break free from the narrative and create something new. This is Hemet, California. It's where I grew up. It's the city that shaped me. It's where I learned how to be a person, where I fell in love with film, and ultimately I'm happy that this is the place that I decided to make a film about. And like most places, most things, it's, it's a city with a lot of bad and a lot of good. Rated in 2019 as the 44th most miserable city in the United States, many of its residents would probably agree. Others beg to differ.